pride and prejudice. This is what we're going to learn today. Come in your love mood. Love and sometimes hate, but love again. What triumphs in the end? Will it be love or hatred? We will come to know in today's capsule summary. Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walad. And today's novel of discussion under British literature is Pride and Prejudice. Published in the year 1813 by our beloved author, Jane Austen. Jane Austen lived from 1775 to 1817. The genre of Pride and Prejudice is, it is a novel of manners. Manners does not mean good manners, bad manners, no, no. Manners means social conventions of that time, okay? Like the societal rank, the hierarchy, novel of manners. And along with that, this is also a romance novel. The protagonist of Pride and Prejudice or the heroine, the famous heroine in English literature is Elizabeth Bennet. The narrator of this novel is third person, omniscient, knows everything. And the setting is, settings keep on changing. The most important ones are Hertfordshire. This is a county in southern England. And Ismay, we will find few estates or basically few houses. Okay. Then the second setting will be London. The third setting will be Rosings Park Estate. Fourth setting will be Pemberley Estate. Don't get confused. Slowly, slowly, you will understand everything. And in a crux, what does Pride and Prejudice explore? It explores the emotional complexity of human relationships. Today, let's dwell into, let's dive into human relationships. Let's begin. Setting Longburn Estate in Hertfordshire. So this is the first estate like a house. Mrs. Bennet and Mr. Bennet live modestly with their five daughters. The five daughters are Jane, Elizabeth, Mary, Kitty, and Lydia. From this, the most important ones are Jane and Elizabeth. Even Lydia will be discussed. Okay. Now, a wealthy bachelor, Mr. Bingley, comes to live in the nearby estate of Netherfield Park. This creates a lot of excitement in the village. Since every mother wants to find a rich suitor for her daughter, theme marriage. You know how it was in the olden days? Even till now, why should I say olden days? Of course, every mother wants that, you know, her daughter should marry off well, should marry to a good boy, should find a suitable boy, right? True, na, agree. But during that time, it was more important because the women were completely dependent on men. So Mrs. Bennett's only purpose in life is, first, gossiping, definitely. Second is to get her daughter's very good suitors. So as soon as this Mr. Bingley enters their town, their county, the women are excited. They're like, oh, he's rich. He's handsome. I wish my daughter can marry him. Okay. So Mrs. Bennett is desperate that Bingley or Bingley should marry one of her five daughters. Easy till here. Now the setting changes to a ball. Ball basically is like a dance party. Bingley meets Jane, one of the Bennett sisters, and is instantly smitten with her. Jane indeed is beautiful, sweet-tempered, and modest. The two dance together, and this makes Mrs. Bennett mama very happy. Oh, oh, Mary Betty or Bingley Eksat Nach Rehe. They will have a future together. They will marry. You know how you keep on imagining things? Now, but Bingley is accompanied by his close friend. So a friend also has come to stay with Bingley. Who is this person? Very important. He is the hero of our novel. His name is Mr. Darcy. Mr. Darcy, but seems proud and aloof. Snobbish kind of character. Jane's sister Elizabeth instantly takes a dislike for this snobbish Darcy. She feels that she can analyze people well. Here the theme is prejudice. You know, I meet you and I instantly make an impression about you. For example, you are quiet. This quietness can be because of two reasons. Maybe you are sick. Maybe you are self-absorbed at that time. But I will have my prejudice. Oh, this boy is quiet, which means... No, 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 not a good person. No, no, he's not talking to me. Very proud. That's my prejudice that I'm forming, my opinion that I'm forming for you. Okay, so Elizabeth instantly forms this opinion for Darcy that Darcy is snobbish, proud and very aloof. Okay, now 
gatherings keep on happening. Over the next few social gatherings, Jane and Bingley start growing closer. Whereas Darcy, despite being proud, finds himself getting attracted towards Elizabeth. He likes Elizabeth's beauty and intelligence. And indeed, Elizabeth is smart, attractive, lively, self-controlled, has an answer to everybody. And she pays very import less importance to a person's social rank, okay? For her, basically, money is not very important. Let me tell you, Bingley is rich, Darcy is rich. They are rich men. So if Elizabeth wanted to, she could have reciprocated Darcy's feelings. But she finds Darcy not very, you know, jovial, not very good, not according to her. So for her, money is not very important, okay? Now... On the other hand, how is Darcy? First, listen to his full name. His full name is Fitzwilliam Darcy. Fitzwilliam Darcy. Fitzwilliam Darcy is extremely class conscious, which makes him appear vain and proud. Here the theme is pride. So pride and prejudice. Easy. So who, who, you know, uh, who portrays pride here? It is Fitzwilliam Darcy. Who portrays prejudice here? It is Elizabeth Bennet. Now, you should note here, the two best friends are absolutely opposite in their mannerisms. That is, unlike Darcy, Bingley is humble and modest, and he lays less importance on social standing. Easy, let's move on. Let's change the setting now to Bingley's house. Remember, he came to stay at Netherfield Estate, right? Now, Jane is invited by Bingley's sisters. Two sisters are there of Bingley. Their names are Caroline and Mrs. Hurst. Mrs. Hurst is married. Caroline is not. So Jane is invited by Bingley's sisters, Caroline and Mrs. Hurst, to spend some time at the Netherfield estate. The truth is that these wealthy sisters do not like the simple and modest Jane. No, no, no. But Jane is so good-natured, she cannot think badly of anyone. She accepts the invite, she goes towards Netherfield, but it's raining, the weather is really bad. The rain on the way makes Jane ill, and she reaches Mr. Bingley in a very sickly state. She's become ill. Result, Elizabeth follows soon. Elizabeth arrives at Netherfield because she has to take care of her sister, Jane. Now, while at Netherfield Estate, Caroline, the sister of Mr. Bingley, she acts very rude to Elizabeth. Why? Because Caroline is interested in Darcy. But as everyone can sense, that Darcy seems interested in Elizabeth. Understood? Yet the love triangle ho gaya. Over the next few days, Darcy, who is also staying there at Netherfield Estate, Darcy's attraction towards Elizabeth increases, whereas Elizabeth's prejudice that Darcy is a snob continues. Yeah? Now, let's get a new person enter the novel. What is his name? He's Mr. Collins, a clergyman, a very clumsy clergyman. Mr. Collins arrives at Bennett's household. He is Mr. Bennett's cousin and heir to his house after his death. Why? Because during that time, daughters could not inherit their father's property. And Mrs. Bennett also comes from a very poor background. So basically, Mr. Bennett is concerned that what will happen to my family after I die, right? And that is also one of the reasons they want good boys for their daughters. Okay, good as in rich boys. Now, Mr. Collins' purpose to come to the Bennets is he has a purpose. Why has he come? He wants to marry one of their daughters. The reason is Mr. Collins lives with a benefactor, a person who's very rich, and she wants that Mr. Collins should marry. Okay, you'll come to know about this benefactor soon. She will also be introduced. Don't worry. Just remember right now, Mr. Collins has come to visit the Bennets. He is cousin to Mr. Bennett and also heir to his house. He has come to marry one of their daughters. He likes Elizabeth instantly. So Mr. Collins proposes to Elizabeth, but Elizabeth, Elizabeth refuses because she finds Mr. Collins to be very clumsy, unsuitable, and this angers Mrs. Bennett. Mrs. Bennett says, come on, he will inherit her house. He lives with this rich benefactor, Catherine. Come on, marry him. But Elizabeth says, no, mama, I cannot. I don't like him. 
and this pleases her father you know elizabeth's father is quite cool about it <laughs> so what happens collins has to marry you know instead collins marries elizabeth's very good friend named charlotte or charlotte charlotte lucas is poor she is looking for some stability and a big house to stay after marriage she chooses not love she chooses stability therefore charlotte marries who collins understood nice now one more person is entering very important character listen around this time an attractive army officer also arrives in the village his name is george wickham george wickham elizabeth gets attracted towards wickham's charms and mannerisms oh the way he talks the way he walks and carries himself he looks like a gentleman he treats ladies very affectionately he is good he is caring is it on the surface we'll come to know but here the theme again is prejudice okay elizabeth takes a liking for the men who are outwardly good prejudice she does not like darcy who is outwardly proud prejudice easy so now wickham has come elizabeth gets attracted towards wickham easy now during one conversation between elizabeth and wickham wickham tells her that he knows darcy well what does he say listen darcy's late father was wickham's godfather and this godfather or darcy's father had promised money had promised money from his will to wickham however after his father's death darcy refused to give any money to wickham listening to this story elizabeth's prejudice against darcy hardens she anyway does not like him her dislike becomes more and more towards this character darcy you know who is cheating people of money yes unexpectedly and suddenly bingley leaves for london on business oh bingley and jane remember they like each other jane is sad and disappointed and just at that time elizabeth receives a letter from bingley's sister caroline what does this letter say the letter states that mr bingley does not intend to return to netherfield moreover mr bingley is planning to marry darcy's sister georgiana reading this letter Jane is crushed. Elizabeth is sure that something is fishy. She says to her sister Jane that I'm telling you Jane, Caroline and Darcy are behind this letter. Caroline and Darcy are deliberately trying to separate you and Bingley. So she tells her sister, don't cry. She tries to calm her down. Okay? Easy. Let's move on. New characters entering. Who are they? Gardeners. This is their surname, Gardeners. Mr Gardiner and Mrs Gardiner are relatives of Bennets basically Mr Bennet and Mr Gardiner's are brothers they are real brothers okay Gardiner's live in London where Bingley has gone now so they invite Jane to live in London for some time hoping that she will get to meet Mr Bingley there but in London Jane could not meet Mr Bingley rather she meets Caroline Caroline insults her and this further disappoints Jane. Let's change the settings now and come to the benefactor of Mr Collins house. Who is she? I told you I will introduce her to you. Her name is Catherine Debra. Catherine Catherine Debra. Rosings is the residence of Catherine. Okay? Let's come to Rosings now. Elizabeth visits Charlotte and Mr Collins. Here she meets Mr. Collins' wealthy and formidable patron, Lady Catherine. Lady Catherine is extremely class conscious, just like Darcy. And coincidentally, Darcy and Lady Catherine are relatives; they are related to each other. After some time, Darcy comes to Rosings. Why? She wants to meet Eli. Oh, sorry, he wants to meet Elizabeth. Yes, Darcy comes. two rosings to meet elizabeth and here their long walks in the nature begin elizabeth and darcy go for long and intimate walks okay but even till now elizabeth does not like darcy please keep this in mind now during one such conversation in the rain darcy proposes to elizabeth yes what does she do Oh she refuses. Do you want to listen to their conversation? It was really interesting. I thought I put it here. Listen, what does Darcy say? Miss Elizabeth, 
I have struggled in vain and I can bear it no longer. These past few months have been a torment. I came to Rosings with the single object of seeing you. I had to see you. I have fought against my better judgment, my family's expectation, the inferiority of your birth, my rank and my circumstances, all these things. And I am willing to put them all aside and ask you to end my agony. Elizabeth says, I don't understand what you're saying. Darcy says, I love you. I love you most ardently. Please do me the honor of accepting my hand. Silence. And then Elizabeth says, Sir, I appreciate the struggle you have been through, and I am very sorry to have caused you pain. Believe me, it was unconsciously done. And Darcy says, is this your reply? You know, Darcy was expecting a yes. And Elizabeth says, yes, sir. Here the theme is class, because as you can see, Darcy is saying, I want to, you know, your low rank, as in you're born low birth, my high rank, all this represents what? Class, class, right? Now, this, this is not the end of their conversation. Elizabeth is angry at Darcy. She has her own reasons. So Elizabeth blames Darcy for many reasons. First, Darcy advised Bingley against marrying Jane. Second, Darcy cheated Wickham. Third, Darcy is so arrogant and snobbish and proud. Darcy is quiet. He's taking these attacks quietly. He leaves quietly, but soon he sends a letter to Elizabeth to clear the cloud of confusion, this air of confusion. What does this letter say? Listen, in this letter, Darcy explains that he intervened between Bingley and Jane because he felt Jane did not truly love Bingley. Jane never proposed to Bingley. Jane never showed, you know, out of her extra interest towards Bingley. It was like only Bingley likes Jane. Jane does not like Bingley. This is what Darcy thought. Next, Darcy claims in this letter that Wickham is a liar and a scoundrel. Wickham has misspent all the money that was given to him after Darcy's father's death. Here the theme is superficial goodness versus actual goodness. Wickham represents superficial goodness, whereas Darcy represents actual goodness. And after reading this letter, Elizabeth begins to feel guilty. She judged Darcy too hard. Her prejudice took over her, right? Don't you worry, happy moment is coming. Happy moment in the novel. Soon, Elizabeth accompanies gardeners on a trip. During this trip, Elizabeth visits this giant, magnificent estate of Darcy, which is called Pemberley. So Elizabeth visits Pemberley, Darcy's magnificent estate. Elizabeth is impressed when Darcy's servants praise their master's generosity. She looks at the photographs of Darcy, the paintings. She begins to fantasize about becoming the wife to Darcy. Surprisingly, Darcy shows up. Yes. And Darcy introduces her to his charming sister, Georgiana. Okay. Bingley also arrives and reveals that he is in love with Jane and wants to marry her. But stop. Stop, things are not correct till now. Elizabeth's trip is cut short when she receives a letter from home. The letter says that Lydia, her sister, has run away, eloped with Wickham. Oh God, running away at that time with a boy. The Bennets are scared because this scandal can ruin their daughter's futures. To save their reputation, Lydia must marry Wickham. She has run away, but she should now marry Wickham. With the help of gardeners, they are able to track Wickham. The cunning guy Wickham demands that he will marry Lydia, but on one condition. All his debts, you know, all his debts that he has collected because of his wrong spendings, they must be paid off by the Bennets. After some time, Lydia and Wickham return to Bennets as wedded couple, married couple. Bennets are surprised and happy. Bennets assume that gardeners paid off Wickham's debt. But in reality, Elizabeth discovers soon that it was Darcy and not gardeners who paid off Wickham's debts. And why did he do it? Out of love for Elizabeth. Oh, the girl becomes madly in love with this boy finally. Yes. And this takes us to the end of Pride and Prejudice. 
Bingley and Darcy return to Netherfield. Bingley proposes to Jane, who is ecstatically overjoyed by the proposal. Darcy and Elizabeth are very happy in each other's company, but Darcy has to leave again to London for business. And during that time, Lady Catherine, the snobbish benefactor of Mr. Collins, arrives. She visits Elizabeth. She warns Elizabeth that do not marry Darcy, even if he proposes to you, because I want Darcy to marry my daughter, Miss Debra. Elizabeth then realizes that, oh, she loves Darcy so much. She cannot share Darcy or leave Darcy. She refuses to promise Lady Catherine. And when Darcy returns, he proposes to Elizabeth again, and this time she accepts his proposal. The two make peace by accepting that Elizabeth acted out of prejudice while Darcy acted out of pride. So the novel ends happily with twin marriages. Jane versus Bingley, Elizabeth weds Darcy, not versus weds. Jane weds Bingley, Elizabeth weds Darcy. Do do shadia. You are also welcome. Come and enjoy. <laughs> and we're done with Pride and Prejudice. Did you like it? I loved it. Nice. Few points to ponder. Learn them for your exam. First, Jane Austen published her novels anonymously, that is, without stating her name. It was only after her death that her authorship became known. Second, Austen herself never married in life. She preferred the life of a writer over that of a wife or a hostess. Her most famous works are Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, Emma and Persuasion. This novel, Pride and Prejudice, revolves around the problems caused due to Pride and Prejudice. And the novel has been adapted into movies in the year 1940, 1995, 2005, and so on. The novel's very famous opening lines are, listen, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Here the theme is marriage. But do you agree with it? I think more than the man wanting a wife, it is the neighbors who want to give their daughters to this wealthy person. What do you think about it? True, right? Now next, Austin wanted to title her novel first, as first impressions. She even wrote the manuscript with the name First Impressions, but it was later that Pride and Prejudice was adapted as the name. Next, Elizabeth refused to Darcy with these lines, okay? Very important lines again. Listen, refused the proposal of Darcy, first time when he proposed to her. I had not known you a month before. I felt that you were the last man in the world whom I could ever be prevailed on to marry. Did you understand? Yes, you did. And we are done with pride and prejudice. If you liked it, do drop in a comment. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, Walat, by Dr. Kalyani Walat, you have to subscribe right away. Take care of yourself. This is Hina from Team Walat. Bye-bye.